Manhattan jewelry designer Barry Kieselstein called his updating and upgrading. Platinum and precious stones are at the heart of his latest collection. The focus is more feminine, closer to nature with plants and flowers as a major inspiration. We introduced a great deal of platinum this year and uh, we've had an overwhelming response. It's a very elegant material. We're also producing a great deal of white gold. It's certainly a spectacular metal, but it doesn't have quite the intrinsic value of platinum. You've used diamonds in this collection. Oh yes, extensively. We've used them as single stones surrounded by lesser stones, and so we've used them as a major presentation, and we've also used them as accent pieces. Kieselstein Cord says his modern windows collection expresses the new femininity in his work. And you can go through the pure shapes of the windows collection, which are extraordinary um, in its framework, or you can go to the shapes of the window collection, and that incorporates stones in, in uh, floral settings, uh, which is quite unusual. It's as if you looked through the window into your garden, and you had a wonderful floral display of diamonds, rubies, sapphires, which is very, very feminine. The topiary collection is also inspired by the garden. It's feminine at the same time. It's, it's very geometric. Um, it's, it's a very individual piece. It's a fun piece because you can roll the diamond ball in the center and you can, uh, and the subsidiary um, platinum balls alongside of it. And it's, it's, it's quite tactile at the same time. It's very sophisticated and it's very subtle. It's done it in the earrings, and the earrings are great because you can wear it for daytime or evening. The, the pave ball unscrews from the earring, so you can make a two-piece earring or, or one piece. Kieselstein's cords Women of the World comes in classic 18-karat gold, platinum, and a black gold he developed. And the Women of the World collection is my ode towards famous women, um, and not so famous women. There are different cultures that are represented there. Asian, Hispanic, uh, Native American, and um, Caucasian. Well, what we did is we really we carved these tremendous three-dimensional representations of, of these different women. And you can see that their features are representational of their culture. And it's very bold, and it's, it's really dramatic. You've also done some big rings, cocktail rings. Um, it's the return of the cocktail ring. At cocktail rings, I thought it was time to have fun again. And I re recall a great cocktail parties where a woman would hold a martini or a Manhattan and she would have her hand in the air and she would be showing off her cocktail ring. Now the stones that you've used are quite dramatic. Yes, we have uh, tourmaline, yellow sapphires, kunzites, um, a pretty broad selection. My preference for stones are very simple, straightforward uh, emerald cut because it's really, you're working with a crystal, it's a natural crystal from the earth and the opportunity to present it in its, in its close, closest to natural state to me has always been the most challenging aspect of bringing out its natural beauty. That's Barry Kieselstein Cord. opportunity to have a gallery show of the most sincere inside work uh, versus product work. Are people maybe going to be a little more cynical of his work because they know him from the fashion world? They might be, but when they look at the pictures, they'll change their mind, I think. a particular eye and I think an eye like that can translate to all different levels of art.
she's always on the lookout for products of mine that have been poor lined by uh, plagiarists. And uh, she's been very effective in actually garnering a great deal of income for our company by suing these would-be pirates. Stein Cord is not only extremely protective of his designs, but also the location of his foundry where all his precious jewelry is produced. On the condition of not revealing the site, the renowned designer was kind enough to give us a tour of his operation. In this room is the creative heartbeat of the company. We go from this room to the next area where we take our finished drawings and they're turned into three-dimensional product. This actually is a drawing of mine. Uh, which is a rough drawing, and it's, it's an angel uh, with uh, wings that move, and we'll take a block of wax, solid block like that, and after spending a few months on it, this is what you wind up with. So we'll go in here, this is the general area for um, uh, work over here. This is from the Women of the World collection, and um, you need something like that. Oh, okay, that, I just wish you could feel the weight of it. That's you can't just lean to one side. And... This is, you know, I am woman, hear me roar right? time. Right, exactly, look at, is... look at this work in here. God, is that gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? And again, in the inside, to have yeah. that much detail, that is by hand. so extraordinary. This is, it takes a month to make this. Okay, how much does this retail for, just so we can really drill? That's not drill? bad, about $12,000, $14,000. They're That's practically really giving it away. After the tour, we headed out to Kieselstein Cord's Manhattan home, which doubles as his showroom. So this is my home, and this is where I work. Uh, the building is divided up into a couple of different sections. Uh, one of them is the work section, one of them is the rest section. For years now, Kieselstein Cord has been shooting all of his own ad campaigns, and he frequently recruits his daughter, Elizabeth Cord, to pose for the camera. What I'm doing is shooting very slow speed film, and I'll be using the light in the room, um, so I get great uh, density of darks and lights, and um, Elizabeth's going to have to remain very still for this. You gotta have that piece. You yeah, gotta, you gotta give her that piece. She can have anything she wants. <laughs> Elizabeth knows I have no resistance when it comes to her whatsoever. <laughs> uh, when it comes to my work, it's built to have longevity. I work in precious materials. Um, it's supposed to go to your great, great heirs. And um, it's supposed to have staying power, aesthetic power, and it's supposed to have intrinsic value. And that's essentially what, what, what I do, and it's what I love to do, and it's basically what I'm about. of video fashion, see what happens when the worlds of fashion and art collide. Under his family coat of arms, New York jeweler Barry Kieselstein Cord has been refining the precious elements for 25 years. He brings nature alive in his Manhattan studio. I'm Barry Kieselstein Cord, and welcome to my studio. walk through the design department first. In this area of the studio, what we do is we design and we develop the work for our entire company. Any fantasy, anything that I conceive or any of my staff conceives can, can come to fruition through the fact that we have such wonderfully talented individuals. 
I use a lot of motifs um, of things that I discovered in my youth and in my childhood. A lot of them had pet names. A lot of them are animal pieces uh, where I could really bring to the piece a sense of humor, uh, a sense of, of, uh, of alive, uh, a sense of actually creating a pet for the owner. One of the most important things is the translation of the original drawing from the concept into the actual physical dimensions of the model, which is critical because it has to be perfect. It is the most difficult aspect of the jeweler's art. What will happen next is this piece, after it's hollowed out, will go into our foundry, which is in the back of the firm. And using the lost wax process, um, we will create a metal conversion of this piece, which then becomes a metal model, our master model. And here we have everything from uh, stone setters to uh, model makers to uh, fine jewelers. These people are artisans. And when you reach the level of artisan, you are a fine craftsman. This is a crafts department. All the components are hand wrought out, uh, hand assembled, hand soldered, hand filed, hand fit, uh, hand matched. Through the years, I have changed patinas and changed finishes and uh, tried to be an innovator because I enjoy that myself. We pride ourselves on the fact that we work as a unit in this firm and everyone is looking out for everybody else's artistic quality. Kiesel Stein Cord won an unprecedented lawsuit in the 70s that reestablished the protection of creative ideas. As one of a kind, all of his designs are copyrighted. The most significant aspect of it for me is it's paved the way for young artists, young designers to protect their work. One of the things that really make me strive harder in my work is the fact that the longevity of the piece, when you work in precious metals or precious skins, um, your clientele expects it to transcend fashion. We have over 3,000 different jewelry designs, 500 bag designs, maybe five to 600 belt designs. I'd like to show you a few things that are uh, complete and finished. These are the Pompeii necklaces. This is the Windows collection. It's very contemporary. If you look at these alligator heads, they are you know, very highly detailed in carving. This is a necklace that I'm very well known for. It's a very simple necklace. It's called a country link necklace. This is a carving of an angel. It's a portrait of my daughter, Elizabeth. This is called the Women of the World. This is a collection that I visualized mentally for about uh, 20 years. These are very jewel-like. This collection took about three years to carve. There are nine styles. There are about 54 variations. If you cut open one of our bags, you might see 30 or 40 templates needed to produce one single bag. I like the large palette of working in a belt buckle because it gives you an opportunity to use a generous amount of material in order to get across your idea. Taking raw materials and creating it into something that's an exquisite piece, that's a challenge worth living for and getting up out of bed every day for and rushing to the office or my studio uh, to bring that piece into the world. Mm -hmm.